Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss how to determine the propagation step for free radical substitution of ethane using this question as an example. So this question says that which reaction is a propagation step in the chain reaction between bromine and ethane in the presence of ultraviolet light. Of course, this mechanism will be free radical substitution. And we have four options, A, B, C, D, so we want to run through which of these options will be counted as a propagation step. Now, before we do run through the options in detail, we want to recap some features or properties involving a propagation step. Now, if you look at the propagation step, we notice we will have a radical reacting with a stable compound and we will form a stable product and we will generate another radical. This is the reason why it is considered a propagation step because the total number of reactive species will stay the same so therefore the reaction will continue and the reaction will propagate. And we also notice for propagation step we are breaking one bond and we are forming one bond and since we talk about a mechanism involving a propagation step which is an elementary step in the mechanism it has to be simple enough so if i look at the process in general if it involves breaking too many bonds or forming too many bonds then we can break it down into smaller steps and it wouldn't be considered as a propagation step so again propagation step has to be simple enough should only involve breaking one bond and forming one bond now if i'm using ethane as an example we know that the first step it is initiation step where the bromine bromine bond breaks homolytically to form bromine radical in the presence of your uv light so let us look at the standard two steps that we encounter for a typical propagation step so once we generate the bromine radical what will happen is the bromine radical will attack your alkene in this case ethane and you take the hydrogen and what we form is we form hbr and we generate the carbon radical now the easiest way for us to remember this first propagation step is when the bromine radical attacks your alkane and why does it attack the hydrogen and not attack the carbon directly the easiest way to think of it is for alkane carbon is at the center it is surrounded by a hydrogen so therefore it is easier for the bromine radical to take the hydrogen and to attack the hydrogen rather than to go all the way in and attack the carbon at the center so this is the easier way for us to remember that remember the bromine radical attacks the hydrogen still the hydrogen forms a HBr and it generates your carbon radical in this case your ethyl radical the next thing the ethyl radical will do is you attack your bromine molecule take a bromine forms your mono substituted product and you regenerate back a bromine radical so this is a very standard propagation step where your bromine radical attacks your alkane forms a carbon radical carbon radical attacks your bromine forms a substituted product and regenerates your bromine radical and the reaction will continue this bromine radical is free to attack other species it can attack another ethane to form another mono substituted product what it can also do is it can attack the mono substituted compound to form a second substitution or third substitution and so on so we actually need to be familiar with writing down the mechanism involving my propagation step including the arrow pushing then let us run through the options a b c d and see which one of them actually fall under this pattern involving step number one and step number two so if i look at option a now involving option a what i have is i have a methyl radical involving this methyl radical attacking a bromine molecule to form your bromomethane and forms a bromine radical now this propagation step is considered wrong because for this question we are dealing with ethane so the alkane they were talking about should be a two carbon compound which is an ethane and we do not have methyl radicals in the reaction mixture so therefore option a definitely will be wrong now how about option b option b if you look at the process i think it is a good idea to try to expand out the bonds and it is easier for us to figure out what is the actual bonds form and actual bonds broken so if i look at the arrow pushing then we should be able to visualize what we are doing is we are breaking the carbon-carbon bond and forming a carbon-bromine bond and I form your bromomethane and I generate a methyl radical now this propagation step even though it is considered as breaking one bond forming one bond we will not be able to see this in free radical substitution because in free radical substitution we do not break carbon-carbon bond 
So if I again look back at the pattern involving these two standard propagation steps, what we are doing is bromine radical break the CH bond, combines with a hydrogen, form a carbon radical. Carbon radical breaks a BrBr bond, combines with a bromine to form a substituted product and regenerate your bromine radical. So the bond is broken, it will be a CH bond and your Br, Br bond. So we do not break carbon-carbon bond in free radical substitution, at least in syllabus. So therefore, in terms of option B, we will also rule this out. Carbon-carbon bond is not broken during free radical substitution. Now next, how about option C? Option C, if I again draw out the arrow pushing, this is involving your carbon radical, attacking your bromine, bromine, and then breaks the Br, Br bond, and it forms a di-substituted product. Now, at the beginning, maybe some of us will just dismiss this off because we are dealing with ethane, which is a CH3, CH3. So the radical that we should be talking about should be an ethyl radical, CH3, CH2 dot. But you notice, it is possible for me to form this CH3, CHBR radical because of a second substitution. Now, the first substitution we will be able to get, again, if I come back to the two steps that we're dealing with, we have already shown the first substitution from your ethane to bromoethane, then it is possible for the bromine radical to attack this carbon which carries the Br group, take out the second hydrogen to form a carbon radical on this carbon here. Then this carbon radical will subsequently attack another bromine molecule to form a di-substituted product and then it forms a bromine radical. So C, actually, it is a possible propagation step. This is involving the second substitution of your ethane from a bromoethane to a di-bromoethane. Now, finally, if I consider option D, option D, if I look at the arrow pushing, what we are doing is we are breaking the CH bond and I'm forming a CBR bond. Now, this process, earlier we did mention, when the bromine radical attacks your alkane, what you do is you take the hydrogen because the hydrogen is exposed. Again, this is the easiest way for us to consider that. An alternative way is to consider the enthalpy change of the process by considering bond break minus bond form. But under exam condition, I think this is a little bit troublesome for us to compare uh, enthalpy change of the process because we have to look out for all this information involving the bond energies that is broken and formed in the data booklet. So it takes a little bit more time. I think it is a lot easier for us to just remember when the bromine radical attacks your alkane, you take the hydrogen because the hydrogen is outside, it is exposed, the carbon is at the center. So the bromine will not go all the way in and attack the carbon. The bromine will take the hydrogen which is exposed. And the bond that we're forming is a HBr bond and it form a carbon radical instead of forming a CBr bond and form a hydrogen radical. Now this would also mean that since when the bromine radical attack your alkane, it's going to steal the hydrogen, not the carbon, then in free radical substitution of your alkane, we will not be able to form hydrogen radical and we do not see hydrogen radicals in propagation step. So maybe what we can consider is if I know that hydrogen radical is not formed, as long as I look at the propagation step, if you see a hydrogen radical being formed, actually we can eliminate this as your answer. So we've run through the four options A, B, C, D, and in this case, I think the best option as a propagation step involving free radical substitution of ethane will be option C. All right, so that was the discussion involving deducing the propagation step for free radical substitution of ethane. Now you do notice in order for us to determine which is a correct propagation step, we do need to be familiar with describing the mechanism, and then we have to understand what your propagation step involves, breaking one bond, forming one bond, and what are the standard bonds that will be broken and formed during free radical substitution. And then we deduce which of these options is the correct answer. So if you've learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.